Vitajmo vas na Ukrajinski telemereži Kontakt. Ja, Justina Lovkovic, vaša vedoča tišvisenštjo provedu z vami nastupnu hodinu. Один із головніших доповідачів на конференції «Україна на роздоріжжі» був колишній голова президентської адміністрації Віктора Ющенка Олег Рибачук. Після конференції він залетів до Торонта на зустріч з місцевою українською громадою. В сегменті «Очима культури» доктор Марко Роберт Стех розповість про великого та трагічного контроверсійного поета Павла Течину. Ділимося сумною війською про смерть Івана Дем'янюка. Слово пам'яті виголосить Аскольд Лозинський з Нью-Йорку. А у розваговій сторінці контакту Урон Кагут побуває на щорічному гаражсел, який організований парахією святого Дмитрія Налароз. Ділимося сумною війською про смерть Івана Дем'янюка. Слово пам'яті виголосить Аскольд Лозинський з Нью-Йорку. The newspaper headline reads, Nazi dies, avoiding jail time. By any measure, John Demianyuk was not a Nazi. By his worst accusers, he was a prisoner of war forced to work in a Nazi concentration camp. The article concludes, Demianyuk was the first man in Germany to be convicted for serving as a guard at a death camp but without evidence of being involved in any specific murders. How consistent. Over 36 years, there was never any evidence. In any event, under German law, a defendant is not considered convicted until all avenues of appeal have been exhausted. John Demianyuk died before his appeal was heard. Yet another example of the facts not supporting the headlines. But then, this was the nature of John Demianyuk's 36-year ordeal. The facts never did fit the accusations. John Demianyuk was an enigma for his accusers. The accusations simply did not stick despite fraud, perjury, cover-up, and the incessant pressure from the Holocaust drummers. John Demianyuk was a Red Army soldier, essentially Stalin's fodder at the battlefront, considered by his commander-in-chief less important than munitions. He was captured and endured life as a German prisoner of war. The end of the war brought little respite, since being from the USSR, John had to evade repatriation to the USSR, a nefarious scheme of the Yalta Conference, where the Allies became complicit in Stalin's crimes. Finally, he managed to emigrate to America and live there generally peacefully until that peace was disturbed in 1976. What followed was 36 years of persecution by new tormentors the Jews and Americans and old ones, the Russians and the Germans. I knew John Demianyuk. I knew his family. I met him several times. He always impressed me as being warm, good-natured, and of remarkable hopefulness. I met him last in the Munich prison in November 2009 on the eve of his trial. Frankly, neither he nor his son his German attorney nor I fully understood the charges against him. I suspect that the entire legal world marveled when the verdict came down against him. Similar charges had not been leveled against any human being. In fact, ethnic Germans had been amnestied from similar prosecution by the German government in the 1960s. Here was a case that flew in the face of basic tenets of jurisprudence, selective prosecution, unequal treatment before the law. I'm not suggesting that John de Munich was a saint. After all, he was a human being, and I'm sure he had many flaws. I do consider him a martyr, however. He was a victim of German cruelty, Russian perjury, forgery, American irresponsibility at the very least, criminality possibly, and the immorality of the Jewish Holocaust industry. Certainly, he has gone to a better place where the judge is not beholden to anyone, 
where therefore justice is even handed and John should be rewarded for his egregious suffering. I am proud to have known him. <laughs>